Far from being an inert substance that we grow crops in, soils are a complex biological web and a fascinating geologic history of the areas that we live in. Understanding our soils not only helps us farm better, but also provides us with the tools necessary to look after the landscape. I'm at a registered soils practitioner training day run by Soil Science Australia and I'm going to have a quick chat to some of the people involved and find out a little bit more about this program today and find out how it's helping farmers, landholders and other key decision makers better manage our soils and achieve sustainable production. G'day Richard, how are you mate? Not bad Tim, how are you? I'm very well, thank you very much for having us out here to this beautiful teaching campus of the University of Tasmania. Well, well yeah, it is uh, absolutely amazing and um, so many different soils and landscapes here to ideal for teaching. It's a perfect resource isn't it? Now we're really good at seeing a beautiful and rich landscape and being able to identify biodiversity above the ground but there's equally as much biodiversity below the ground isn't there? Yeah there is and, um, and it's very diverse too. I mean one of the reasons we want to teach out here is because um, you've got quite a concentrated array of landforms, landscapes, um, streams um, and various types of deposits. What makes you so passionate about soils Richard? Soils are the window into understanding the history behind landscapes. Yes. Because soils fundamentally uh, the earth materials that are, you know, have been transported and deposited at certain places and they're resting there in the landscape and form soils. And so they provide a microcosm of environments for what you were asking me at the beginning, and that is the soil biology and, and life and health beneath our feet. And I think landscapes are very good for all of our mental health. And yes. it turns out soils are even better because fundamentally soils do represent that interface between, well, firstly interface between the atmosphere, the biology above the ground and, and the earth materials themselves. So it is a very, very important interface that we interact with through irrigation, tillage, fertiliser application. And we either disturb and degrade or we disturb and improve through our activities, don't we? Yeah, we can have a big effect because yeah. we are working at one of those very sensitive interfaces. So if we compact our soil or cause structural damage, it will affect water infiltration into that environment, that will affect the soil biology, will also the health of our crops, and also the health of our rivers and streams, because you'll change the amount of runoff compared to infiltration into the soil. Now you're the president of the Soil Science uh, Tasmania yes. branch. Yep. Um, what's your role? I guess restore the confidence and pick up the interest in soil across the state and start to drive some of these educational activities, which is why yep. it's so exciting that we've been selected and people are coming down here to learn from you know this university farm facility, which is for teaching and research. That's what I'm trying to do, is trying to build that back up. Because I'm fascinated with soils, I've, you know, in my income and my, my welfare has come from interacting with soils and interacting with farmers and, and, and the construction sector and all sorts of sectors, the geological sector that interact with soil materials because they've all got different problems they all mm. need solutions fundamentally deep learning is through doing yes you know, we can look at pictures and we can read things and that's all great but it's not until you start to do and practice something and you know you're confronted by a group of farmers and you've got to start to say something intelligent and, and develop a dialogue with them that the deep learning happens and and that's what's so important about this training G'day Cameron, how are you? Good team, yourself? Oh, very well, thank you mate. Now you're the Regional Soil Coordinator for Southern Queensland and Northern New South Wales, yeah, is that correct? that's correct. Yeah, I work out of the uh, Future Drought Fund hub at University of Southern Queensland in Toowoomba. So your role, how would you describe your role of being a Regional Soils Coordinator? Well, I, I see it as being um, somebody who can help implement the National Soil Strategy. So we've got okay. a 20 year National Soil Strategy, yep. um, first in the world. Uh, and our role is about you know, informing people about the strategy and the programs contained therein uh, to you know, get that on the ground action occurring. And some of the problem in the past with soil strategies is that they've been piecemeal or isolated to states and your role in itself proves that states aren't really a good border for soils, are they? Yeah, we're an interesting jurisdiction because we cover yeah. two sides of a state boundary, which has its challenges, but I guess it's also an uh, indication a lot of the landscapes don't stop at the, the state boundary. So having a national strategy about soils, what does that mean? So a national strategy about soils gives us the opportunity to look at it holistically, 
and strategically mm -hmm. so that we can implement programs you know, on, a, on a national basis, noting that there's regional context, regional landscapes like rainfall patterns, agricultural systems, but it gives us a framework to look at things such as the workforce that's supporting soils, the skills and knowledge they need, uh, the policy and regulation. So we're looking at it more holistically, uh, I guess, rather than just on a state or a, a other jurisdictional level. And we're in the start of this program at the moment. You're doing what's called a Registered Soils Practitioner Training Day. Um, how important is that? I think it's very important because um, it's it's filling a missing, or it's filling a gap, I guess, in in the education and training and people who are taking soil samples and providing advice to landholders yep. um, on on the results from those soil tests. So it's sort of a padding out a bit of a gap. The biggest error that happens in soil testing is what happens in the field. And so yes. if, we, if we can eliminate that or reduce that, well, that's a good first step to get more consistency and accuracy in results. And then also understanding that uh, it's not just the top 10 centimetres of soil that, that's important, it's a, the whole soil system's important. So it gives you a broader understanding of soil as a system and places into context those results so that landholders can get better quality advice, make better management decisions on how they manage their land. Yeah, that, that's what we're trying to achieve, I guess, is to, to manage our land over the long term so that we can, can keep feeding ourselves and, and looking after our environment for you know, centuries to come. Cam, healthy soils, healthy communities. That's well it. done, mate. Cheers, thanks, Tim. All Thank right. you. Good on you. Talk. G'day, Belinda. How are you? G'day. Good, thanks, Tim. How are you? I'm really good. <laughs> How important do you think it is that people take part in regular soils training? Yeah, super important. I mean, I think myself and a lot of us have different skills that you kind of build over your career and your time at uni or TAFE or whatever training you did, but you don't necessarily get to implement those that regularly. So it's super yep. important to get that kind of refresher and especially hearing from experts in the area that have been with farmers more regularly and getting that up-to-date information. So you can kind of build your own skills whilst also knowing what's going on on the ground. I think it'd be great for anyone who's interacting with soils and landholders um, on, a, on a regular basis. And by landholders, I don't mean just, just agriculture, but anyone, mm -hmm. anyone who has things to do with soils and the land and how they're managed. Well, it looks like the future of soils in good hands in Tassie. Thanks very sure much for your time today. You. Good Thank on you. Thank you. G'day, Abby. How are you? Hi, Tim. Nice to meet you. It's fantastic to meet you too. What a wonderful place to be in to talk about soils. Uh, all places are wonderful to talk about soils, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> now, you coordinate a very special program, don't you? I do. I coordinate the National Soil Science Extension Community of Practice, which is a mouthful, yep. but essentially it's just a group of regional soil coordinators that sit with each of the drought hubs around Australia, okay. and they come together to learn and network from one another, and Soil Science Australia helps coordinate that group. And through that association, those people have access to all the brains trust of Soil Science Australia as well. So where do you see a program like this going into the future? So I see that it's really important because extension is really important. And the yep. reason this project is running is because it has there's been a dearth of that. And people yes. say they want more help and extension. So into the future, I see that that is only gaining momentum, if you like. People are really engaged and interested in, in soils, which is great. We love to hear that at Soil Science Australia. Yeah. Um, and they and they want to know more about it. They want to know how to manage it. They want to see if they can take um, techniques and ways of doing things from other areas and tweak them for their own areas and things like that. And that's all what extension is about. So Abby, people watching this are going to want to know. Okay, good. We're doing the training. These people are really experienced. How do I get in touch with them? How do I m take advantage of all of this knowledge and experience? Yeah. Is there a way of getting in touch with your local regional soils coordinator? There is. The regional soil coordinators sit within the drought hubs so mm -hmm. there's roughly one drought hub per um, state and also Soil Science Australia has its own little um, mini website within its web page um, and website to uh, ab about that program and about the regional soil coordinators so either of those places you can go and find how to get directly in contact with your regional soil coordinator. It's good to hear that there is a program that's sustaining knowledge in the industry about soils too isn't there? There is it's very great. important for this sort of training to 
continue because if it's not practiced and people don't come together regularly and practice their skills we're going to end up without a benchmark aren't we? That's right and that's what's been really obvious in this um, recent event that we've had with people here in Tasmania is that they've had the um, the luxury I guess of being here for a very long time so they know the landscape and the soils back to front and inside yes. out they're still learning new things but that understanding of our landscape is invaluable and we do need to think about how we pass that on. Well in this day and age of sustainability and regenerative agriculture we can only hope that a program like this continues long into the future and we thank can. you very much for having us out here today. My pleasure Tim. Good on you. <laughs> thank you. Okay.